take it across to Pashupati Advani, Nuresh uh, Mirani, as well as Kunal Botra and find out what they're making of the market so far. Kunal, a nice climb up, uh, 170 points higher. The future is now sitting at 25,200 plus. Do you think this is, uh, is going to hold? Yeah, I think it's been a good recovery for the index. And you know what uh, distinguishes today's move over the last three, four days uh, you know, of uh, rally or an, a pickup of uh, price action for the indices is the support coming across from large cap names and the three key sectors, financials, which have started to look very attractive. Many of the stocks are seeing a follow through up move, uh, you know, large cap names in that parlance. Then, you know, the second and the most important is the real estate index that ind indicates the high beta nature of the you know, markets, the risk and appetite of the markets making a comeback. And then the IT stocks, which are also making a very strong comeback, especially after last week's mild disappointment, which came by in the second half, uh, you know, post the ECS result, we saw many of these IT stocks going into a mild bit of profit booking or a sideways price action. These stocks are now trying to make a comeback. So I think on the back of this, uh, you know, three key sectors, which have started to look attractive, uh, I would probably believe that the uh, trends, at least on the stock specific front, looks uh, positive. Now, the two levels to watch out for uh, in terms of the index on the Nifty specifically, 25,250 on the spot levels is something which I'd be watching out for. That could be a first uh, you know, litmus test of a breakout of sorts for the Nifty. And for the bank, if 52,000 on the bank Nifty on the spot levels is a very important resistance. So if you manage to scale past another 150 points, then I think we could probably be looking at a breakout as well as a start of momentum for the index. Okay, point taken. So that's the view coming in at the index level. But Nuresh, what's the view on HDFC Bank doing quite well for itself? And the other one that we're watching out for is, of course, BSC. That too is having a great run. In fact, if you look at the last one week move, and that should come up for you on the screen, my guess is that stock must be up uh, at least in double digits, if not more. So 22% in last seven days itself. What's the view here, Nuresh? One should book out the profits on BSC or hold on? So um, starting with BSC, the stock has done really well and it's gone uh, much more than anyone would have expected in the last two months. The stock uh, after all the uh, announcements around it. So time to book some profits off uh, currently because it's gone from 3000 in September all the way now to closer to getting closer to 5000 rupees. So that's a price point. We'll also see some sort of a pause. Uh, then going to HDFC Bank, that looks uh, promising because finally the stock has shown some relative strength in the last two sessions. So the stock was the first one to correct sharply from 1780 all the way down to closer to 1600, 1620 band. And which is the support band it had for the last three months, July, August, it did not close below 1580 and has now made a pullback. And now we go towards 1750 as a target in the short term. Okay, point taken. That's the view coming in on BSC. Yes, definitely run ahead of everyone's expectation. But Pashupati, what's your take up? This, of course, financialization theme is not a short-term theme. It's not a matter of a few months or even a you know few years at that. Definitely a long-term theme for India. With respect to that and the fact that the NSC IP is expected to be around the corner, um, which are the names from the financial ancillary setup that you would recommend? Well, obviously, because the NSC uh, IP is coming, then you know, CDSL and uh, BSE obviously would be participating because I think that, um, you know, the BSE, I'm sorry, the NSE IPO is coming from currently at a higher P than the BSE one. So so people would obviously look at BSE as a cheaper alternative and uh, go for sort of uh, convergence to mean. Um, the other thing is that, you know, generally the bank index is doing well. Uh, it's being pulled up by HDFC Bank, which is a very large part of it. And uh, Again, you know, I'm not so wild about HDFC Bank simply because I think the merger is going to take time. But overall, it's a good long-term buy. And if you're in a fresh FI looking at India, definitely HDFC Bank has to be part of a big part of your portfolio. And therefore, it is. So I think that, you know, that's what's bringing it in as opposed to, you know, I like HDFC Bank because it's going to outperform the others. I don't think that's the case. Okay, that's the word coming in right now on uh, where HDFC Bank is headed. But uh, Pashupati, what is it that you made of the uh, you know the commentary coming in from Avenue Supermarts? Qcom clearly hitting them hard, and then of course other organised retail plays uh, as well. Quite a threat, uh, you know, minuscule as it may be in the revenue share right now. But Azudio, for instance, as well, is sort of eating into uh, the territory that. Um, you know, an avenue supermarkets in. And of course, you know, needless to say, the company also coming out in the open and saying QCOM clearly has eaten up into their market share and led to that margin slip, at least when it comes to the urban large metros. Well, you know, the, the thing about uh, Avenue is that they are making a large amount of their net profit from 
non-food items in the sense of, you know, um, they, they're making money on garments and, you know, underwears and socks and all the other things, kind of like uh, Costco and Walmart are in the US. So they're becoming more like that. But it does take time to move from one, you know, when they've been only in food to go across uh, all segments. And I think that that's uh, happening. Now, during the transition, obviously, things are all over the place. And that's obviously putting some pressure on the margins. But I think that long term avenue is a good place. And, uh, you know, um, it's a good company, certainly well run company. And, uh, you know, the promoter and the CEO have done very well and have made, uh, you know, fantastic things that are you know, making it happen. It's unfortunate that, I mean, the temporary glyphs have, have meant that the, the brokerage houses have lowered their, uh, uh, their weights, but I think that's just a matter of time. Right. In fact, uh, you know, we chatted with Venugopal Gare from Bernstein as well just today uh, morning. And uh, he also shared with us his th thoughts on what he thinks about uh, DMART going forward and the kind of uh, challenge that they're going to have from the entire quick commerce space. Given where we see uh, Avenue Supermarts opening today in terms of stock price, see, um, if you were to, I actually, uh, you know, find it a bit difficult to believe at an India-wide scale, you're going to see an impact on Kiranas in general, at least in the next couple of years. If you're positive in quick commerce, I'm still saying that. It's hard to believe it'll be $50 billion in three years, right? So it's not going to be that disruptive for the overall ecosystem uh, to be impactful enough because I think convenience time itself is relatively restricted. Some of the quick commerce names, both upcoming as well as the ones which exist, we have overweight stands on them. Now, interestingly, I do like organized retail as well. So I think this is a, from a pivot point point of view, it's a very unique situation where we are positive on both at this juncture. right? And I think it's going to play out over time in a fairly different way, but we're currently overweight both. Quick commerce is preferred over uh, organized retail and both are preferred over traditional retail. There comes a time when your heart calls for you to arise. Plant your feet solid into the ground. Decide your own limits and then break right through them. Become something more. It's my time to rise. Hyundai Motor India Limited now proposes an initial public offering of its equity shares. The 100% book built offer is being offered at a price band of Rs 1865 to Rs 1960 per equity share of face value of Rs 10 each. The anchor investor offer period it opens and closes on Monday, October 14th, 2024. Offer opens on Tuesday, October 15th, 2024. Offer closes on Thursday, October 17th, 2024. For risk involved and other details, please refer to the Red Herring Prospectus, which is available on the website of the company, SEBI, BRLMs and the Stock Exchanges. Ooh.